skyscrapers and buildings and are blown away by the mesmerizing beauty of the structures. And how many of y'all only think about the architects involved in the structure, in the design of the structure? I'm sure the majority of y'all only think about the architects, right? What many of us fail to realize is the amount of work and effort the engineers put in. So here we are to address my dear lecturers and teachers, uh, lecturers and classmates, to talk about a profession that most of us take for granted, civil and structural engineering. Good, morning, good afternoon to you all. My name is Pili, and these are my teammates, Jasmine, Fuming, Sin, Sarah, and Yinsun. And we are here to address the roles and responsibilities that are carried out by a structure and civil engineering. What is structure and civil engineer? It is a professional engineering discipline uh, and design construction in which uh, the, it helps the architects and the co contractors. Uh, they work together basically. So according to Mr. Hoffman, the Adam, Mr. Adam Hoffman, it is one of the oldest design fields. So I'd like to call one of my teammates right now to talk about the roles and responsibilities and the drawing stages carried out by the civil engineer and the structural engineer. In reference to the article by the Australian Government Department of Education and Training, civil and structural engineers um, work closely with their construction industry workers. For instance, their colleagues, architects, co-workers, contractors, and of course, their clients, which uh, sometimes can be the same person as the architect. From here, we can understand that they need to be able to communicate and cooperate effectively with the construction industry workers. Um, besides refer to the same article, civil and structural engineers need to ensure the material being used can support the design of the structure so that it does not deflect, vibrate excessively and um, collapse, and that the structure remains stable and secure throughout their use. Um, in addition, in order to do this, uh, resolve the design and development problems, they need to think creatively and logically at the same time to solve the problem they face. Other than that, they need to, um, according to an article from a website called Workable, they mentioned that um, examining potential risks and uh, giving advice like how to improve uh, structural integrity is one of their responsibilities, one of their main responsibilities. For example, um, they recommend to repair or remove the defective parts, or in the worst case, they may even recommend to rebuild the entire structure if they really need to. It is also essential for us to remember that a civil engineer work is a completely focused on building structures and drawings. A civil engineer work is also covered up on the supervision of tendering procedures, Sorry, tendering procedures and putting up in proposals, and not to mention undertaking technical and feasibility construction. Um, uh, I shall now talk about the differences between differences between a civil engineering and structural engineer. As a civil engineer. A civil engineer is far more concerned on designing elements. Meanwhile, a structural engineer is focused on investigating the materials used for the construction. In order for this to sorry, in order for this to be accomplished, a civil a structural engineer will create a series of drawings to be to help with the stages of construction. And not to mention that this will allow for the construction to be for the construction teammates to 
communicate together. And now I shall pass this down to Fungne to continue with her brief on construction, drawings and stages. So now I will talk about the construction and drawing stations. Based on the Parinero studies, after civil engineer get the architectural drawing from the architect, he or she will start to prepare the tender drawing, which includes in the early building process. Documents, which includes the bill of quantities, will be done and you will then be issued to contractor for developing this. These drawings and documents, these drawings and documents can describe the project scan so they can price the construction work accordingly. After a completion of tender drawing and bidding process, the civil engineer will start to prepare the contract drawing, which include by legal binding contract between contractor and project commissioner. The contract drawing are somehow more detailed than tender drawing because it includes all attempts resulted from queries by proposed contractors. This drawing can be the same as tender drawing if tender drawing have no any alternate proposals. Due to its importance, this drawing can be the printed on good quality paper and be given a cloth backing to withstand long-term storage. As you can see, there's the example of the contract drawing. Next, civil engineers need to work on the working drawing. The drawings is more details than tender and contract drawings. It tells the actual work and it tells the actual work and manufacture of a project. It also represents the engineer's final decision regarding various details. However, if it is a small project, the drawings may not significantly differ from the contact and tender drawings. Whereas in a big project, these drawings are more detailed, it's often supplemented by final design and construction details in the form of notes and additional written instructions. Changes may be made if there are any conflicts regarding things like expenditure, cost, the material use, and so on. Last but not least, the civil engineers will issue the final set of drawings made in building project after the building is complete. Completed construction. Completed construction, which is called the completion drawings or as field drawing. These drawings record record project as it was built. I would like to talk about the similarities and the differences between the architectural drawings and the structural drawings. So um, these are the samples of um, the architectural drawings and the structural drawings. We actually decided to take these drawings from the same project so that it is easier for all of you to see the comparisons between these drawings. So, um, the similarities between the architectural drawings and the structural drawings, first of all, is that both of these drawings actually provide floor plans. So, since we took these drawings from the same project, obviously the floor plans are also the same. So, next, um, these drawings also provide grid lines. The grid lines are normally used to locate the position of an um, item. Like for example, in structural drawings, 
we use the grid lines to um, locate the position of the beams, which I will explain it later. So um, these drawings actually um, were drew in detail. However, they have their own ways of detailing things. So now I am going to talk about the differences between the architectural drawings and the structural drawings. So the architectural drawings basically explain the details of the interior and the exterior part of the building. Like for example, um, the type of doors they use, the design, the windows, um, the wall partitions, the furniture that they want to display in this building, and many more. As for um, structural drawing, it basically explains the details of the structure of the building, like the type of beams they want to use, the size, the length of the beams, the pilings, the columns, and etc. So, um, so, um, so these are the sample of one of the working drawings, which is the uh, one of the structural drawings. Sorry, one of the structural drawings, which is called the working drawings. And um, on my right hand side is the floor plan of the building, and on my left hand side is the details of the beams that are used for this building. So right now, I am going to show you how to actually read uh, these drawings. So, um, for instance, we want to know the um, details of this specific beam right here. So um, each beam actually has its um, own code. So for if you take the cl a closer look um, for this beam, you can see the code of this beam is 2B.15 in bracket 150 times 450. And now referring to the grid lines, we want to know the location of this, these beams. So from the grid line, this beam is located under D2 between 2 to 1. So now we already know the code for this beam and also the location of this beam. So from there, we can refer to the details, the drawing details of the beam and we can find um, the details of the beam like here. So as you can see, the code for this beam is actually the same, which is um, 2B.15 in bracket 150 times 450, and also the location of this beam is also the same, which is located in between 2 to 1. And you can see it's detailed there. So um, that is basically how you read the working drawings. And um, that is all about the similarities and the differences between the architectural drawing and the structural drawings. Now I am going to now I am going to pass this mic back to Tilly. Alright, I hope you all had got a better understanding of what a civil how a civil engineer's drawing uh, is, the stages, the construction, and um, these are the references that we got to make to put our presentation together. Um, and to conclude, I would like to mention again, like I did in the before, that how essential it is to understand civil engineers' work because they also think about it. It also includes the overall safety in various different facets because because it's important for them to actually think about how uh, the safety of the society. So. Um, also, and I would also like to say that the, it, it's the civil engineers, it's important for the civil engineers to work with architects, especially when it's the final stage of construction. So that's it for today. And